you are welcome to yet another episode of HN What's Your Say? The number one listening show where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring our Kelly. Real name, Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. The past events have seen a dynamic shift in the status quo. When R. Kelly threatened the prosecution's New York landslide victory against him in Chicago, where he managed to defeat over half the counts he was charged for, despite Judge Lyon Weber's interference with the jury's decisions that was intended to disadvantage him. R. Kelly's Chicago successes are not to take for granted, considering some of the verdicts made there do have a direct impact on the New York case. And because the Brooklyn federal judge Ann Donnelly knows this very well, She could not help but panic a great deal to make sure that R. Kelly settled the New York set of stage-managed victims before things went south to see them walk away with nothing. We cannot deny that this was a possibility, considering some of the charges R. Kelly defeated in Chicago were perfect determinants as to whether the New York judgments on each count would hold. Most New York guilty verdicts were largely premised on the belief that R. Kelly had evaded justice back in 2008 by engaging in alleged obstruction acts of bribery, and were also largely dependent on the belief that he was a violent man of bad character who physically abused women, an image of him that had been largely portrayed in the wake of the surviving R. Kelly docuseries. Fortunately for R. Kelly or unfortunately for the prosecution, their attempts to connive with the witnesses to make incriminating testimonies with disregard of the real truth to a large extent failed, and this is how R. Kelly managed to scoop a 7 out of 13 score at the end of the trial, R. Kelly could have won on three more counts to make 10 out of 13, if it hadn't been for Judge Lyon and Weber twisting things at the end, when he advised the deliberating jury to issue three guilty verdicts on counts that involved coercing, an act R. Kelly had been determined not to have done. Because Judge Ann Donnelly technically understands what the law says, even though she sometimes makes very questionable mistakes we assume are deliberate actions, there is no way she would avoid a panic. Ann Donnelly knows that R. Kelly's innocence for obstruction of justice back in Chicago makes court's decision to retry him not only double jeopardy, but also a court error of decision. According to the government, it was his act of obstructing justice back then that created a need to retry R. Kelly, and in the absence of this particular conviction, the conclusion is that the Chicago trial verdict should hold. If they cannot blame the defendant for this, they are left with no other alternative except to blame the accusers. This however would mean that their principal witness Jane is the guilty one, and for this she would have to face justice herself. But if she isn't guilty for this, meaning there is no one to blame for what they termed as a wrongful acquittal, then there would be no reason to challenge the court's decision back in 2008, and this overrides everything. All witnesses in Chicago described a kind, loving and caring man in R. Kelly, whose only mistake was never sticking to one woman or call it never choosing among the multiplicity of women to say, this is my wife and others should back off. Take note that this is not criminal. Since this is all going to give R. Kelly an upper hand during his New York appeal, this was certainly not Judge Donnelly's piece of cake especially before her beloved witnesses were compensated. Remember the appellate court's role is usually to determine whether the law was applied correctly by the trial court or not. If errors are determined to have occurred during the application of the law by the lower court, the appellate court has the mandate to reverse the trial court decision. So while the trial court has the luxury of prejudicially concluding that the defendant is a very bad man, and convicting him on each count on those grounds, the appellate court only considers what the law says. For the fact, our Kelly fans need not worry much about what the malicious trial system decided to conclude. If a case does not go to the appeal court, this means it's still ongoing and very incomplete. The undisclosed role of the trial court is to gather all evidence and list it in the trial transcript, gather all witnesses and determine their credibility and whether their statements can be believable or not, but the real judgment is for the appeal court which drops all the sentiments and focuses on what the law says. The judicial system knew well that there will be judges who will turn the trial court into a court of public opinion, and for this reason they introduce the Court of Appeal. If I put myself in Donnelly's shoes, considering we know well what her interest is, I too would probably panic. You don't want to be the malicious issuer of such an unfair sentence of 30 years to a great man like R. Kelly, 
and wake up to learn that this has been overturned by the higher court. The Chicago trial surely did surprise the anti-Kelly camp who thought it was going to be easy to tell lies and get away with it. It actually raised questions as to why the first trial was whisked to New York, perhaps so it's handled by their preferred judge Ann Donnelly. Did they have a prior agreement with her on how the trial should move? Just why did they have to fly the case over to her? No wonder she has been so quick to address the restitution's issue, taking money out of R. Kelly's commissary forcefully. Just in case the appeal favors R. Kelly like it will. At least the women will be paid and she will be at peace Judge Donnelly. Imagine these are the kinds of situations and people R. Kelly has had to deal with. It's hard to imagine in our judicial system there are people who choose to be pro-accuser and anti-defendant for no clear reason. A judges were never trained to pick a side and predetermine the defendant guilty. On the other hand, a judge is supposed to provide a leveled arena for both the accuser and the accused to simply prove their claims. It shouldn't matter to her who wins the trial or doesn't. According to Rico Hatcher, he's gonna win his appeal R. Kelly. His attorney Jennifer Bonjean is not to be played with. Note that his two co-defendants McDavid and June Brown were found not guilty which translates to no enterprise, means there was no RICO violation. Meanwhile all his other rights were violated including the Fifth Amendment. According to Lisa McRae, it doesn't matter if extort him is what they want to achieve considering he's currently broke. God works in mysterious ways. The more he has, the more they take. I think that it's best to slow the gravy train down. If it's money they need, maybe Taco Bell is hiring? According to Kosunya, black people need to realize that what has happened to R. Kelly can happen to any one of them. The fact is that R. Kelly's basic rights were overridden due to personal bias, and of they say. It's a scary thing seeing and knowing that the government have personal vendetta against you. Government is always ready to override the law and create their own rules as when it's convenient to forcefully take people down. They will do this with any means necessary. Scary thing and this is the government system we all subscribe to by default, but what can we do? If you wish to take part in a live interview on this channel discussing any of these topics, let us know by emailing us on sashahnnewsroom at gmail.com for scheduling. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say. To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below, and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.